In today's business quick tip, we're going to go over earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, amortization, or just EBITDA for short. What it is, when you should use it, how to calculate it, and why you should love it. All this and more today. Hello and welcome to Stephen Carlson Show. I'm Stephen Carlson. I'm a tech entrepreneur, real estate investor, author, YouTuber, and volunteer paramedic. If you would like to support my channel, please make sure you click like and subscribe. Doing so really helps with the YouTube algorithm, and I appreciate it very much. Thanks. Also, how about you start building up your net worth with two free stocks, with one of those stocks being valued up to $1,400. How, you ask? Easy. Just follow the link in the description for Weeble. And after depositing $100 into their stock trading system, you will be given two free stocks with one of those being valued up to $1,400. After you get your free stocks, make sure you comment down below and tell me what stocks they gave you. On to today's EBITDA business quick tip. EBITDA, or earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization, is a measurement of companies' overall financial performance. And it's used as an alternative to net income in some circumstances. Now, however, EBITDA can be a little misleading because it strips out the cost of capital investments like property and equipment. This metric also excludes the expenses associated with debt by adding back the interest expense and the taxes to earnings. Nonetheless, it is a much more precise measurement of a company's performance since it can show earnings before the influence of accounting and financial deductions. Now, the benefit of using EBITDA to evaluate a company's performance is that it is completely capital structure neutral. Thus, it's not affected by the decisions of how a company finances its balance sheet, whether it's debt or equity or kind of a mixture of both. Also, it excludes non-cash expenses like depreciation, which may or may not reflect a company's actual ability to generate cash. Okay, I know, this may be a little confusing, so let's break it down with a simple story. Suppose you wanted to evaluate two lemonade stands. For this illustration, we're going to kind of just assume that both of them are completely the same. They sell the same product, the same sizes, the same prices, everything's the same. Billy's Lemonade Stand Incorporated saved up his allowance for years, and he has funded this entirely through his own equity. Whereas Susie's Lemonade Incorporated did not want to wait years until she saved up enough money. So she took out a loan from her parents, and she's primarily using this debt to fund her operations. The only difference between these two is how they choose to finance their business. One with debt, one with equity. As you can see, because Susie's Lemonade Incorporated uses substantially more debt, $1,500 at 10% interest, to finance her operations, it's a little less profitable in the terms of net income. $390 in profit versus $487.50. However, when compared based upon EBITDA, both lemonade stands are completely equal, each producing $800 EBITDA from a $1,000 in sales last summer. Now, if you would decide which lemonade stand you wanted to buy, you might think that Billy's Lemonade Inc. is a better investment because of the higher net income. However, in reality, both of these businesses are completely equal. Susie's Lemonade Inc. simply employed more debt than equity and thus had more interest expense dragging down the net income. However, when a business is sold, it's typically delivered to the buyer debt free. Thus, the differences in how these two businesses currently finance their assets is really not that important to the new owner, who can basically choose how he or she will prefer to finance their new business. This is why using EBITDA as an earnings metric is very common in private equity and in mergers and acquisitions, where it's assumed that the new owner is going to have full control over how the balance sheet is going to be structured. Okay, so now that we understand why EBITDA is so useful in certain circumstances, how do I calculate my EBITDA? It is very simple, even for someone dyslexic like myself. Grab your most recent tax returns and add up the following numbers. Your net profit plus your interest paid plus your taxes paid, plus your depreciation and amortization amounts. That's it. This now gives you your EBITDA number. Okay, okay, so why should I care about this? Does this really matter to me? 
Well, yes and no. It depends on your situation. If you are interested in a Main Street lending program that's the MSLP loan as part of the CARES Act, then yes, you're going to need to know how to calculate this number as it determines the size of your MSLP loan that you are eligible for. If you're just interested in selling your business, a more favorable EBITDA goes a long way towards attracting a buyer. Thank you very much for watching. I really hope this quick tip has helped you. Please make sure you click like and subscribe. Doing so really helps with the YouTube algorithm. Thanks, and I'll see you on the next one.